we're having a great day today. Today we're going to be highlighting another well-known historical organist, but unlike the previous organists we've looked at, this one is not primarily known for his organ playing ability. If you've been around the channel long enough, you've probably heard a few of his pieces, but even if you haven't, I'd be willing to bet that you already know the name Felix Mendelssohn. So here we go with 10 things that you might not know about this great organist. Number one, Jacob Ludwig Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdy, to give him his full name, was born February 3rd, 1809, and died November 4th, 1847. Number two, he was born into a prominent Jewish family, but while Mendelssohn was still a boy, his family converted to Christianity. It was at this point that his father Abraham added Bartholdy to their last name. Number three, Mendelssohn was a prolific composer, and several of his most famous pieces were composed before he turned 20. He is most well known for his symphonies, concertos, oratorios, and piano music, and during his life he composed more than 750 works. Number four. In addition to being an accomplished composer, conductor, and pianist, Mendelssohn, as you probably have guessed by now, was quite a skilled organist. Number five. Even though he was a prolific composer, his organ repertoire is fairly limited, though that does not at all diminish the quality. Mendelssohn's six organ sonatas and three preludes and fugues are staples among organists. The works are challenging but approachable and display a wide range of styles. An interesting side fact, you can call this 5A if you want, when Mendelssohn's six sonatas were first published, 190 copies were purchased. Mendelssohn received 60 pounds from the publisher. In today's terms, that comes to approximately $35 per copy, which is incredibly good by today's standards. Number six. Mendelssohn performed organ recitals throughout Europe, though his playing was particularly well received in England. However, he never performed any of his own pieces in public, and indeed, he even remarked that English instruments at the time were often not able to handle the intricacies of the pedal passages in his sonatas. Number seven. As I mentioned before, Mendelssohn was an accomplished conductor. What is not nearly as well known is that he is a large part of why we still listen to classical music today. At this time in Europe, it was not common to perform music from deceased composers. Only contemporary music was performed. Mendelssohn changed this when he performed Bach's St. Matthew Passion, which hadn't been heard since Bach's death. This led to a revival of Bach's music and brought the practice of performing older works into fashion. Number eight. Mendelssohn was a master of performing Bach's music, including his organ pieces, and was even hired to produce an edition of Bach's organ chorales. Have you noticed how everything with the organ always seems to come back to Bach? Number nine. On March 8, 1837, Mendelssohn married Cécile Charlotte Sophie Jean Renaud. Together they had five children, Felix August, Carl, Paul, Marie, and Lily. And finally, number 10. Mendelssohn was not the only musically talented person in his family. His sister Fanny was an accomplished pianist and composer, and Mendelssohn's third organ sonata was actually composed for her wedding. So that concludes our list of facts about Felix Mendelssohn. Now, obviously there's a lot more to his life and work than I was able to cover here, and of course, this being a channel about the organ, I did focus on that aspect a little more than some other people might. Incidentally, the music that's been playing under this video is from Mendelssohn's various sonatas, and if you'd like to hear them in their original state, I'll include links in the description and the end cards so that you can listen for yourself. I hope that you have enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to give it a like, leave me a comment, and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to subscribe, and make sure you click that little notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all my latest posts. Be sure to follow me on social media, and if you'd like to help support this channel, I would encourage you to consider becoming one of my Patreons. You can find links to all these sites down in the description. Thanks for watching. See you real soon.